Okay, <clears throat> I think we can um, get going. Welcome everyone um, to this uh, Hydroflex webinar. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, work package 3.2, flexibility of hydraulic turbines. Um, what we do is developing a framework for optimization of uh, Francis turbines um, with minimal uh, human interaction uh, and as much uh, flexibility as possible. Um, with me today is Maria Jordal, um, who's going to start things off. Thank you. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar with the Hydroflex project, and it's divided into seven work packages where we are all uh, working on creating a more flexible uh, turbine. Uh, and we are part of the third work package. Uh, but it does also, uh, the entire project also includes uh, using, creating a generator and converter. We also have work packages on social acceptance and yeah, definition of several different scenarios in in the Europe. Yeah, but today we will only go into uh, what we have worked on, which is flexibility of turbines. Uh, and this work package, again, it's divided into four different uh, minor work package. First, there will be a development of the sign tool uh, for a variable speed Francis turbine, and that is developed by NTNU. And we are also using that in our part, which is the second part here. Uh, where we will be doing numerical analysis. Ah, yes. um, oh, thank you. <laughs> In addition, when we have come up with a, a design using our tool, then the design will be validated at NTNU through experiments. Um, and finally, also a turbine life estimation will be included. Uh, so we will dive into work package 3.2. And this is where we are creating a parametric design tool. Um, so first off, there are, um, for our uh, turbine here, as you see, we will be working on, on the runner, but also the stay winds and the guide winds. Uh, and the goal is that we can vary these design parameters here, such that we can add different operating points. We do not only have to operate the turbine at the at best efficiency point, but we can also operated outside of it and uh, to do so we have to change a bit of the geometry uh, and the overall goal here is that we will create a design tool that all of these parameters can be changed uh, in order to get a new design uh, so we are using numerical tools that we have in our ANSYS software package uh, to do this analysis on the different designs that we are uh, testing out. Um, yeah. And in order for this to work, everything has to be uh, automated. So we do not have to add a lot of human interaction. We are making everything streamlined and it includes quite a bit of, of programming and, and the setup also has to work for different kinds of, um, uh, of operating points and for different kinds of geometries. So it's uh, a lot of works go into creating this process very robust and automated. Uh, we have some main design criteria as we are creating a design tool. We also have to have some, some criteria for it. Uh, and we talked about uh, flexibility and for that, uh, we mean that we can use a variable speed. Uh, so the runner speed can now uh, vary within different uh, intervals and uh, but we still want to uh, to have a good efficiency at all these different operating points uh, and that goes into the hydraulic efficiency that we've been uh, looking at it's been quite normal to look at before but the new one of the main new things that we are adding is the structure where it now has to also cope for different kind of loads from the fluids, the fluid pressure. Um, yeah. So we see here in the figure at the, the bottom, that we first have this turbine design code, and that is what we saw from work package 3.1. So this is generated in, in MATLAB. 
and based on the design that we or from this design we will now do uh, CFD analysis and also structural analysis and then we test the different op operating points so that is the variable speed that we see here as our first main design criteria um, and this for all these operating points we will now get outputs that we use in our optimization loop to generate new designs uh, that we again can test for different operating points and we also have a third uh, criteria that we're keeping in mind and that is that the, the turbine has to cope with very high ramping rates uh, as it has to be able to start and stop 30 times every day uh, so that adds a lot of new uh, Oh, yeah, I guess it's new, but also adds uh, different. It, it's quite challenging for the structure to be able to to go from from very low uh, low speed to quite high speed. Um, yeah. As of now, we've been working mostly with the two first criteria that we see, but we will also add in this third one uh, so that we will come back to. Uh, an overview of our process can be seen here. Uh, so if we go from uh, top to bottom, we see that we start out with design and then we move further into simulations uh, on these different designs. And finally, we do some post-processing. Mm -hmm. So we will go through all of this in detail, uh, but for an overview, uh, we first create a design using the MATLAB code. Um, and from this uh, design, we get uh, something called curve files, which describes the geometry. Uh, and these curve files we use both to create a CFD mesh, but also to create an FDA mesh. So they're both based on the exact same uh, files. And both of these uh, CFD and FDA mesh, they will go into our simulation block. Uh, firstly, we do a CFD or a fluid analysis using CFX. Uh, and from this, we get a pressure field, which we can, can map on in the mechanical analysis. Uh, and from both of these analysis, first from fluid, we output efficiency, uh, which tells us how good our design is. Uh, and in from the structural analysis, we get stresses, uh, which tells us if the structure can handle the load. Uh, and all of this, the CFD and the FAA analysis, we do for five different operating points in our current design loop. Um, yeah. And the output file goes into MATLAB for post-processing. So we uh, analyze the results that we have gotten. Uh, and using an optimization function, we can see, we can evaluate or analyze our design. Uh, and this loop can go on with, again, with creating new designs in MATLAB. Um, and the main, or one of the most important things to point out is that all of this is automated. So what you do is you set parameters uh, beforehand and then you can run and this entire loop, all of these steps that we see here go, uh, and go on just by themselves. Uh, so we will go in detail in all of these blocks that we've seen here. Yeah, starting out with the design. Uh, so again, our turbine design code is created in MATLAB. It's created by Igor at NTNU. Um, and it consists of 16 variables. So we see here on, on this figure, if you take a look at the one uh, to on the right to the left, with the meridional view and then we see the, the hub and the shroud and we see all of these different parameters that can be used to to create the curve that designs um, the turbine and so we have parameters setting the leading edge the trailing edge we set the, the, the thickness of the blades we can set the, the geometry for the yeah, for the shroud and for the hub and, uh, and it makes quite a big of a difference. If you take a look at the picture here on the right, uh, then we see it's a different in the leading edge leaning, uh, where the parameter go from minus four to four degrees. 
And we can see that it actually flips quite over and it makes a, a great difference when we are optimizing and analyzing the results. Um, and on the bottom here also, you see diff three different designs uh, that shows yeah, the difference that we get. So we have a lot of a lot of parameters to work with and a lot of different designs to test. Mm. Ah, yeah, and here on, on the left side also you see again from uh, MATLAB and the, the 360 degrees uh, turbine. And these are the ones that make up um, the 3D geometry that we see here on the right side that we have created in, in ANSYS. So once we have the, uh, the design that has been created in MATLAB and we have these curve files, then we can move on and creating a CFD mesh and creating an FAA mesh. Uh, so these are both on independently, but again, depends on the same, the same files. Uh, first off for the fluid domain, and then we have, well, what we get from the design code is the, the runner design, but we also need to have different uh, guide veins opening for our, our uh, different operating points. Uh, and these guide veins are pre-meshed to different kinds of openings. So we can, uh, by entering different operating points, we can get these different mesh and can combine them uh, with the mesh that we have created based on the files from MATLAB. Uh, so the files that we get from MATLAB, we can read into TurboGrid uh, and create the mesh of the runner automatically. So both of these two makes up the, the fluid domain that we have. Uh, for the structural domain, and uh, then again, we get the same curve files from MATLAB. Uh, and then we have to go into space claim and create uh, a full, both the structural domain and also the fluid domain. So if you see here on our left side, then what we see is a lot of curves, a lot of lines, and this is what this is what we get out from from the MATLAB code. And based on this curves, we can now create a full 360 degree turbine. So we see we get both the turbine blades, we get the structure, and also here on the left you can see that we have added in the fluid as well. Uh, and it has been divided into one passage. Uh, so we will show uh, a movie that shows this entire process as it is, it's all scripted in space claim. So it actually goes, it just goes on by itself just by importing these files. Uh, the main idea that you see here is you have the, the script on the right side and that's uh, Python based and used for um, creating this uh, geometry that we saw on the last uh, slide. Okay, <laughs> I'll uh, talk about um, the simulations. Uh, as Maria said, um, the different meshes created in uh, the geometry module is then loaded into a simulation module. Um, we mentioned earlier that we want to look at variable speed operation um, and um, what we've done uh, to evaluate this is uh, to simulate five operating points 
where we have the best efficiency points in the middle and we have uh, a span of 20 percent um, in both directions meaning in both flow, flow rate and runner speed uh, meaning that we get five operating points um, that we can evaluate um, of course from the the fluid simulation we extract efficiencies and from the mechanical um, simulations, we extract the mechanical stresses. Um, of course, the more of these points you uh, simulate, um, the better, the, the, the more information you get about the runner, but there is in optimization always a question of um, simulating as fast as possible. So in this first set of simulations, we've, ch we've chosen to only have uh, five operating points. And the fluid setup is uh, fairly straightforward. Um, we have a set of guidelines. We have a runner domain and also a draft tube domain. Um, one of the key things here is that we only simulate passage models. This is again to speed up simulations as the whole uh, turbine and the guidelines are um, rotationally symmetric. And we use this um, to reduce uh, the number of mesh elements. Um, the setup itself is uh, fairly straightforward. We have total pressure and uh, on the inlet and pressure outlets. Um, and an interesting uh, point is that we are performing transient simulations. Uh, there's more than one reason for this, but the most important is that we want to look at uh, the harmonic response in the runner. Uh, harmonic response is um, the structure, uh, the structural response due to oscillating loads and oscillating loads is by definition transient. That's why we need to run transient simulations. And um, in order to get the correct pressure field in the runner, when you do this passage modeling, we need to implement something called Fourier series at the periodic interfaces. Not gonna go, on, go into the details, uh, but this is to ensure that even global mode shapes uh, can be captured uh, using this uh, passage modeling. The coupling is uh, fairly straightforward. We run a CFD analysis. We extract whatever we want from the, the fluid domain. And we also calculate um, the transient fluid pressure. Um, this fluid pressure we uh, express using Fourier series, which is a frequency domain representation. And we map this onto the structure um, in the structural domain. The structural um, setup is also fairly uh, straightforward. We, uh, of course, need to add acoustic elements. Acoustic elements is elements that uh, represent the surrounding water. And you have uh, two effects from this. You have added mass effects, which will change the natural frequency of the submerged object. And you also get acoustic pressures that can propagate through the domain. Um, the harmonic analysis, as I mentioned, is, is solved in the frequency domain. And we map on the Fourier coefficients from the CFD um, and perform harmonic analysis on the given operating point uh, from the CFD analysis. Then we extract all the five um, operating points into uh, an analysis module. When um, when we run five different operating points on each design, we need to somehow uh, make these different simulations into some indic indicators that we can optimize. 
Uh, there's different ways of doing this. We could, um, for example, choose the maximum values. Um, we could, of the five operating points, we could choose the maximum efficiency and we could try to optimize this value. We could have chosen the minimum value. Um, if we had, uh, uh, we might want to maximize the minimum value if that makes sense. Um, in the structural domain, we might also look into that parameter. We could look at mean values, we could look at standard deviations and so on and so forth. Uh, these choices are uh, free to set by the user. And for these initial tests, we have chosen um, to look at the mean efficiency, which means that uh, of the five operating points, we look at the average efficiency and we try to maximize this value. And we also uh, look at the max stresses in the runner and of course, try to minimize that value. Um, so then after we have gone through all the modules and we have gotten this efficiency indicator and stress indicator, we feed this back into the optimization loop. And optimization is handled by um, uh, optimization program called Optischlang. This is also uh, a program based on graphical programming, meaning that you can easily combine different uh, programs like Python, uh, MATLAB, and ANSYS. Um, so in the bottom left corner, you can actually see the visual layout of our uh, optimization loop where we have the different modules. The design module in the bottom, uh, very bottom left, and then the geometry module, uh, uh, the simulation module, and then the analysis. From this optimization, we get uh, all kinds of results. Uh, I'm going to just briefly go into some examples. Uh, all the different uh, optimization functions can be plotted with all the free variables and you get also uh, an indication of how important the different parameters are to the overall response. In the figure here, you can see two uh, parameters. Don't worry too much about the names. These are two of the free variables in the design code plotted with uh, the maximum stresses. And we see then how different um, different uh, parameters affect the overall response. We can also get tables, um, which is called coefficient of prognosis matrix, where we see how all the different uh, parameters on the left axis affect the different optimization functions. And this is where it gets really interesting. We can see, uh, for example, the efficiency. We can see then which of the parameters affects efficiency the most. Um, and we can see which of the parameters affect the stresses most, and we can compare. And this means that in a conventional optimization where you only look at the efficiency, you might say, think that some of the parameters are um, less sensitive than the others. But when you include the stresses as well, you might see that some parameters are uh, a lot more important than you thought in the beginning. Um, and this is where we can uh, learn a lot in this multi-disciplinary uh, optimization. As of today, we, we've worked a lot on building this framework uh, and getting all the mechanics to work, the file handling and so on and so forth. And the next step will be to, uh, first of all, validate with previous research. Uh, Igor Ilyev has uh, published papers on the CFD optimization of this. We, of course, would just want to validate and see that our simulation 
uh, give the same response in terms of CFD and then add the structural uh, uh, part of it. We will then perform a set of final simulations and deliver a design to enter new for uh, production uh, in the summer, if everything goes to plan. We will then also uh, start to look at start stops, um, use selected designs uh, and evaluate uh, the, the start stop performance um, of these designs. And finally, of course, uh, validate everything with experiments when the new turbine is produced and installed in Trondheim. Thank you. I don't want to go too detailed into the results as of now. Um, I, I mentioned it a bit earlier that we, we've tr we've, most of the work has gone into um, making everything uh, work. Uh, and we have used, in many cases, a bit simplified models in terms of mesh and, uh, and so on, which means that we, we, would, we, we try to avoid to, to give the exact uh, efficiency numbers and, and so on. Um, but the, uh, we did briefly check uh, the sensitivity in terms of efficiency and compared it to, to uh, what Igor had found in his paper, which is the, the figure on the top right figure here. And we see that the, the parameters that uh, are sensitive with respect to efficiency in our simulations is the same as in Igor's simulations. Um, and that's a very, very good start. And then the interesting part will be to see which of the parameters um, that maybe Igor has discarded from uh, based on the CFD is actually important um, based on the stress values. We haven't uh, concluded yet, but we were, that, that's, the, that's one of the next steps. Okay, so we have a question now. Efficiency is strongly related to details in the flow pattern, which again is very closely related to turbulence modeling and other numerical issues. How robust is the optimization in this regard? Um, it's that's a, a good question, uh, and it's one of the it's one of the drawbacks of having a fully automated uh, process. Um, we need to make a setup in advance, something that we, we test on, on single cases and we look at, um, for example, convergence, so on and so forth. And then we have to use this setup for every um, simulation in the optimization, which means that we, we're not uh, unless we we go through hundreds of simulations, we, we don't really uh, monitor the simulation as it goes. And uh, for example, um, the turbulence models, of course, is just chosen in advance and also numerical issues, as you mentioned, in terms of uh, convergence and so on, is not explicitly checked for each simulation. Um, and that's, of course, um, uh, a drawback and something that we haven't quite figured out how we're going to tackle as of now. We might, we might include some uh, stricter convergence uh, checks and maybe discard some simulations if certain uh, thresholds is not uh, reached and so on and so forth. Um, but we think, uh, we, we, we do believe that maybe trends is is probably uh, very much possible to to find with these setups but higher fidelity simulations should probably be performed in both the structural and the fluid domain uh, when we start to pick the the optimal uh, designs just to have a check and and see what's uh, what's the uh, actual expected um, efficiency and stress values um, so I think then the, the, the trends are probably uh, 
what's going to be the main, the trends and correlations is probably the main results from this uh, type of optimization. And then we got a question, can a tool be used with other optimization algorithms, uh, GA for instance? Uh, I, I'm not quite sure uh, GA, what, what that means, but in, in OptiSlang you have a variety of optimization algorithms, uh, direct optimization, global optimization, um, everything from neural network to, to simplex methods. Um, in uh, the reason why we chose this more sensitivity uh, based uh, study in the beginning is partly because Igor was doing the same in his uh, work and uh, partly because we wanted to see uh, the in, in a global sense the uh, the effect of the different parameters on the efficiency and stresses it's not the most efficient or the fastest way of optimizing um, something, uh, but it will give you, uh, of course, the global um, global uh, correlations, which uh, which is good. We, but that, that's that's up to the user, and it can be modified from from uh, the different uh, runs. We got a new question. Every modification on blade shapes changes the design point too. With these five operating points, you may not catch the center of the heel charge. By taking the average, you may end up with a high average efficiency with a wrong design point. Right. Um, in, in, in general, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, in this case, uh, Igor has uh, created this code such that the design point uh, is unchanged. Um, of course, this is uh, this is uh, may not always be the case based on what design code you're using, but in in this very case, it is. So we we're we we don't need to to worry too much about that. Uh, there are ways you could avoid that issue as well, maybe simulating more points, creating a surface and then uh, search for the optimal point. And then based on the optimal point, you could then create a new uh, mesh of operating points in the vicinity of this. But in, in, in this case, we, we have a virtually unchanged design point, which simplifies uh, our simulations. Hi, Roberto here from UU. Congratulations for your impressive work. Thank you very much. Uh, you were talking about the chance to simulate oscillations in the turbine transit analysis. I would like to know if those oscillations are triggered by the fluid itself or if they are started by an immersed ripple in the torque. Thanks. Impressed ripple in the torque. Um, we're in, the, in the structural domain, we, we perform two types of simulations. We perform a static uh, simulation and a harmonic uh, simulation. Uh, from the CFD analysis, we we get a transient pressure. We uh, automatically sample the Fourier coefficients, where we get the A0, which is the static pressure, and uh, the Fourier coefficient, uh, which uh, is, in essence, the amplitude of the pressure uh, oscillations. The static pressure is mapped onto the structural analysis where we get um, the, the static pressure, the mean pressure in the in the in this um, structural domain, and then we map the Fourier coefficients, the oscillating pressure onto the harmonic analysis. And from this we get the uh, oscillating stresses, which is the fatigue uh, contribution. And uh, so in that sense, we don't do a, a transient simulation in, in the structure, we do a harmonic analysis. Uh, and you ask if these are tr triggered by the fluid, and, and yes, the, it's purely fluid um, triggered oscillations. And in, in this case where we have a fairly a low speed number, it's uh, closely related to the rotor stator interaction. 
um, from uh, the guideway and runner uh, uh, interaction. In the summer, there's uh, IAHR conference, and we have a paper um, accepted for that conference. And of course, we'll circulate this paper uh, uh, to everyone who are interested. And also, we can give references to Igush papers if you want to dive into the details behind his MATLAB design code. Uh, he just finished his PhD, so the, the full PhD will probably also be publicly available soon. Okay, seems like we are um, done. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. Um, if there are any other questions, just contact me or Maria or um, uh, <laughs> Sara, I guess. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, again, thank you.